Hello, hello, and welcome to another Blender tutorial. Uh, I'll talk about trim sheets and how you can use them to kind of like speed up the asset workflow, but as well as use them in an artistic way to cr generate fast assets uh, to populate your scenes. Uh, now, if you're unfamiliar what trim, se trim sheets are, uh, they come from video games where it's used to populate a level using minimal textures. And essentially, you're just designing a texture with trims on them. Uh, just to do a quick example of what that means, I'll just drag this window over. And just as a quick rundown, let's say you have... Uh, I'm using my mouse here. So let's say you have a building and this building has a top and maybe it'll have let's say uh, some sort of interesting decorative elements here um, and then maybe like a bottom here and within this trim here or this line here this may be a, a you know like a, a different pattern so the way this would be laid out essentially it's more or less the same like this so your texture would be like this and let's say maybe the top row. Now let's imagine this is like uh, wood or maybe uh, intricate p patterns that are all different. Let's say for the top one, we'll have the different patterns here. So this this is your texture sheet now, and this is your model. Model. So let's say your your, your front facing patterns will be here. And they can be all, you know, different kinds of shapes. The uh, thing with trim sheets is you really have to plan out how you're going to use this trim sheet before you start generating assets. And I'm kind of doing this in reverse, but just to get the point across. So you have a variety of, let's say, front end shapes to put at the end of your model. And then we can have maybe a variety of decorative strips with patterns on them that we can use. So let's say, uh, you know, let's say pattern here and this one's like all triangles just a, a quick example and then maybe over here would be some sort of quick brick now this again like the way this is laid out it'll be up to the discretion of the artist and how you work in your workflow uh, but I'll just show you how I like to lay things out here that you can use as a basis to improve change uh, as a starting point so we have bricks here and then maybe over here we can have like you know wood elements or something like this and then finally uh, maybe just like a uniform big rock texture so based from this trim sheet we made this model here and then we can do let's see another wall and using the trim here we can see like oh, okay so I can probably have you know these uh, rock faces maybe jutting out so like this is the front and the side view will be kind of like this. Maybe it goes inside. And there's a trim here. And then that's that'll be like a base here. So these front elements, if I was going to map this out, it'll be representative in green. I can stack all these UVs. So if we have a UV like this, or the walls like this, our UVs can be stacked on here can stack them all up and now the beauty of this is let's say if we're changing this wall design or if you want the, the face of this inner texture to change we're going to select our UVs and we'll move them over one and now it's going to have this kind of G pattern on them rather than this X all right so moving along let's say we now we have this like this pattern here this UV face we want some interesting pattern here so we can look here and like oh you know what i kind of like this uh, let me just change this here i kind of like this look and then maybe the bricks so you'll grab your uv face or your uv uh, unwrap of this and you'll just drop it on top of this texture here so that your uv will look like this on top of this now if you're really clean with this like if if you don't start you know moving uvs outside because what ends up happening is it repeats but if you keep everything inside a cool thing is you can create these new trims with the exact same layout and you'll have a completely different wall without moving your uvs or if you have some sort of um, procedural algorithm where you move things in a y coordinate so let's just go like this hang on just to explain myself better so this is x 
and this is why. And let's say every time you generate a new wall, like, hey, move down like one unit of, of some measurement, X, or I'm just gonna use one as an example. So it'll grab this UV, shift down one, and so this top corner could probably move down here. So rather than having this trim being here, do this example like that, it's going to start with this uh, brick instead. So I'll start with this brick. Brick pattern up here. And it's really versatile to getting unexpected results. A little bit of chaos theory maybe, perhaps? <laughs> but essentially that's just the gist of how trim sheets work. Because traditionally, it, let's say you've created a model, you just have a texture of, let's say, this is a, a wall texture, and then maybe you might have, let's say, a a wood texture with the ends here, and then maybe you have uh, another wall texture with a, a trim here, and then you put that on top, and it, it's like very like inefficient in a way where it won't allow for modularity and creating new unexpected results. And this is just just a way to start thinking about that. So you don't you're designing the small parts to be able to see how the whole looks, and that's just a quick rundown on trim sheets if you're unfamiliar with it. Uh, you can definitely look up more of this. It's really fascinating. So let's just put this this way.